I guess I'll start. Uh, Tyler, just how, how, how does it feel to be back out on the field after you know, the long summer? Oh, yeah, it's, it's awesome. You know, everybody's kind of looking forward to it. You go through spring ball. It's kind of like for the younger guys, get out here. And, you know, we got some freshmen out here, and they're, uh, they're still trying to get the offense and stuff like that. And it's our responsibility as older guys to um, help them out and get them there. But, yeah, it's awesome. A lot of energy. We had two good first days. Just about the, the receiver corps, obviously, I've, I've, the quarterback gets the attention, but obviously you're a big part of the offense. So just talk about the group this year, what you guys hope to accomplish. Yeah, obviously having Braden Gleason back is, a, I mean, best, one of the best quarterbacks in the country, if not the best, and, you know, it helps us out a lot. But I think our, our room is really hungry. You know, we got me and Jalen are really the only two guys that have played a lot of minutes, and, you know, Zion has a little bit. But, you know, Zion's hungry. Um, Chris McGee, Tyreek Robinson, all those guys have been waiting their time, and I think they're ready to come out and show what they got. So. Well, you you talk about being out here first day, last day for helmets only. Yeah. How does the intensity change a little bit when you come back tomorrow? All of a sudden, you got those shoulder pads on. Yeah. So, you know, kind of the first two days kind of suck with blocking. You have to block without pads. It's awful, you know. But um, yeah, I think it'll bring more intensity tomorrow. Uh, getting some shoulder pads on. It's uh, it's not that we're uh, not going 100% here, but it's a little different practice style and. Um, having pads out there will get going a little, a little faster, more physical, and that's what I mean. That's what football is. So you mentioned the wide receiver room, and you guys have a lot of experience, a lot of snaps back from last year, and a lot of the guys have talked to me so far about how well everybody is coming together because so many of you have been in this program for so long. Yeah. How does that increase or maybe make easier the relationship that you have? with Braden as your quarterback to kind of just have a knowledge of where everybody's going to be to be able to check plays, to be able to change plays at the line and keep the defense off balance. Yeah, so, you know, I've been blessed to have Braden as my quarterback from this is my fifth year, going to my fifth year. So that's all, you're talking about a lot of snaps in spring and fall. And, you know, it's not just in practice. It's also in the summertime. We're constantly getting reps after practice. And uh, it's not just like, you know, the starters. It's this, you know, um, the other guys that are going to be playing for us. and. You know, he does a great job on getting us where he wants to be. And not just Braden, but the other quarterbacks do also do a really good job. Well, this is our first position coach, so I want to ask you, you know, Coach Harris, what's, what's the story on Coach Harris? What's it like to have him as the leader for your room? Yeah, yeah it's awesome. I've, I think this is his, uh, I think this is going to be his fourth year, so my fourth year with him. And, um, you know, he, we, we've grown a lot together. And, uh, you know, he's a younger coach, but he does a great job. And I think... Uh, Nobody's played with him anymore. You know, our room used to have some guys that played with him when he was playing, and I think there's nobody there. So he's a, uh, I think he's enjoying it a lot. Well, I, 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 if that's him right there, I think the he was trying to outrun one of the defensive oh. guys. So me, does, does he ever try to get out there and run with you guys? Oh no, but he knows, he knows he can't <laughs> run with us anymore. <laughs> two, nah. knee surgeries two knee surgeries, you know, pull a hamstring every once in a while. So nah, it's, it's awesome. That's all I need. You, you talk Zion, I guess you know. First of all, you know, being back out here, just kind of the first couple of days, how exciting is it to be back on the field? Uh, it's great to be out here. Uh, I've been waiting my turn to kind of like step up and play like a major role in offense, and I feel like uh, I have opportunity to do so this year, and I'm really excited to get out here with these guys. The guys like Tyler and um, and uh, Jalen, yeah. thank you, Jalen. Um, yeah. You know, kind of leading the way for the guys this year, bringing the QB, mm -hmm. um, you know, high-powered offense. Like you said, you're looking forward to taking that next step. Just kind of excited to get that opportunity. Yeah. Um, I got to learn my last couple years um, from Corey Thomas, and I mean, like he was a vet here. He was here for six years. He knew the ins and out of the off or the, the offense, and um, he was a good leader. And I learned like a lot from him. So uh, it'll be cool to try to put that on the field. Yeah. Obviously, the team wants to take the next step forward offensively. The pieces are in place. You know, maybe what are you maybe working on? Um, you know, it's early on in camp to try to take your um, game to the next level. Well, with me, this is uh, like my first year, just going like every single rep with. Um, with Braden Gleason, so uh, I'm just trying to get the timing down and my steps down, and um, just being one with him. Because I've been like with like every quarterback on the roster now. This is my third year, so uh, now I finally get to step up and uh, be with QB one. So uh, like time is going to be big. Um, the like the communication and uh, just getting in my playbook and just learning the ins and out of offense, kind of like the guys that came before me did. I guess for you, like you said, it's a little new work with Braden, but how's it been the first couple of days? It's great. He's a dog. I mean, he's yeah. the best quarterback in our conference. Uh, he has been for the last two years in my opinion. I mean, I've got to watch him. You feel <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he's great. He's the best. Thank you. Zion, you, you mentioned that there are other guys in front of you mm -hmm. that you've had to play behind and kind of wait your turn behind that taught you things. What's the most important thing, the most important lesson that you learned from those veterans who aren't here 
that you're going to try to bring with you now that you are knowing like, hey, I am going to be a big part of the offense this year? Uh, the biggest thing that I had to learn from guys uh, like Corey and, uh, and Will Amos and things like that is just um, the maturity of like college football and um, like how mature and like how like in shape and how just like head headstrong you have to be to get through the whole season and be healthy and be one with the whole oh like the in, the entire season how what does maturity mean to you in terms of being a guy who is now stepping into a different role in terms of being on that number one offense versus I mean, obviously coach Higgins is wanting everybody mm -hmm. to be mature whether you're a freshman or whether you're here for six years mm -hmm. but how do you kind of take that to a different level now that you're going to be playing with the ones more being a sponge being a sponge to all the guys that that have been here to all the all-conference guys um to all the receivers that have played before me to my coach because he played here too so i mean he knows the ins and outs of everything that we're doing so just being a sponge yeah what what's it like to be coached by a guy who had so much success here in the black and gold uh it's great i mean it it just, it just feels like really it just feels like like really comfortable because he's been here he stayed here uh he cares about us a lot, and you can kind of tell with the way he like communicates and does his job. How important is it with the way we run this offense? As much as you guys have to run, how mm -hmm. important is that deep wide receiver? Uh, it's really important. We have to have at least two deep at every single position, or uh, we just won't be as good as we need to be because uh, every guy can't take a hundred and like twelve snaps a game because we run tempo, so we get a ton of plays in, and um, we have to be deep for that. We have to have guys that know the or that know the offense and um, are confident out there and can play fast. Jalen, I guess uh, first couple of days back out here, how does it feel to you know, get back on the field after the long summer? It feels good getting back on the field, man. It's always good to run around the QBs, go against the defense. You know, it's like being back home, you feel me? So it's yeah. always good to be back out here. You have um, obviously deep receiver class last year. Some games you get nine, ten guys in, in the stat sheet. Some of those guys graduate. You, yourself, and Tyler, top two guys coming back, just kind of, you know, how does it feel to, you know, What's it going to be like for the free offense this year? I, I think it's going to be good. Those guys that you know left uh, this year or last year um, did a good job of making sure those guys were prepared for this year. So they left them off in the right uh, footsteps. Big shoes to fill, obviously, but I feel like they're going to fill them. We got good depth still. And so talk about maybe some of those other guys who are you know like um, just the guy who's trying to like on Zion. Zion, 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 like, yeah. Zion. You know, guys like him looking to step up maybe take more reps for the first team offense. How do you think those guys are going to do this year? I think Zion and those guys are going to do a great job. Like I said, Corey was in front of him last year, so was Dix. They did a good job of preparing him each and every week, like he was going to play, you know what I'm saying? So he's going to do a good job of stepping in his role. He's made some big plays in practice already, scored touchdowns seven on seven. So he's going to have no problem stepping into them. Uh, New roles he's gonna have. And how, how important is it to have Braden back? You know, at QB from there. <laughs> oh, you know it's good to have an All-American back there. You know, what I mean, number ten is always gonna put the ball on you. You know, he's never gonna lead you out there astray. Uh, he's gonna communicate with you, make sure we're good to go on game day. So it's always good to have ten back there. And you mentioned the intensity and how good it felt just to be back out here practicing. Yeah. There are some schools that don't necessarily do ones versus ones all the time. Mm -hmm. You guys do it almost all the time yeah. here at Emporia State. What's that intensity like knowing you're going against guys like Jay Will and the other big stars that you have on this defense? It makes us better. Iron sharp as iron, you know the saying. Uh, it's always good to go against the defense one on one. It only makes us better for when we play against Northwest or any other school. It don't matter who's out there. Just one on ones help us get better because we know the guys across from us are good players too. You know, it just helps us get better overall. Zion's mentioned that there have been other guys who are not here anymore who have given him some lessons that he's hoping to take this year. Yes, what do you? teach him and what do you try to mentor him in terms of what it takes to be as a teammate now bringing a guy along who wasn't a number one last year who's going to probably get a lot of number one snaps mm -hmm. this year I think just competing you know I do one thing he want to do the next thing I make a big play he want to make a big play I think just competing in that aspect will help him pull along we'll push each other to be, better, be the best offense we can be one thing coach Hicken said yesterday was that he thought that it was a good first practice because the ball wasn't on the ground a whole lot. The offense yes, took care of it. He said that, you know, when you're just in helmets only, that's the number one thing. How do you guys think that you did today in terms of cleaning things up and keeping the ball off the turf? I thought we did a good job keeping the ball off the turf today. You know, it's tough, you know, with how fast we go. The tempo kind of, you know, gets hard. But we're learning. You know, it's only day two. We're getting better with it. Um, but, yeah, we try to practice like NFL teams, trying to stay up, trying to keep the ball, you know, in our hands, all those good things so nobody gets hurt. And the last thing for you, you know, I, I wanted to ask about Coach Harris. Uh, he still gets up and down with some of the defensive backs here. What, what's it like to have him as a coach? Yeah, it's good having him as a coach because, you know, he played here, so it's always good to get feedback and 
talk to a guy who's been in our shoes and played in this offense, you know what I'm saying? But he thinks he can run with us. I don't think he can run with us still. <laughs> he thinks he still has some burners, but I don't think so. We'll ask him. Go ahead. You can ask him. We'll ask him. Right. Good. Well, Coach, um, a couple of days under your belt now. How, how excited are you to get back out here and, and have to the long time? So excited. So excited. This feels like normal now. Yeah. So kind of during the summer when we're all split up and, you know, we can't see the guys all the time. It's it's weird. And then camp starts and just, you know, a sense of calmness uh, kind of, you know, reaches over you. Yeah, I guess um, offensively, we know a lot of this offense revolves around the quarterback and, and the receivers and the air attack. Um, you know, some of the new guys like Zion step, looking to step up this year. What have you kind of seen from the group as a whole? Uh, they're hungry. They're hungry. You know, I mean, you kind of mentioned it. There's, there's the two guys that were all conference last year. And, are leading really, really, really well, and and uh, Coach Schumacher's helping me out a lot. He was an all-conference guy, so you know he makes my job easier. Um, but they're hungry. You know they know that they are trying to prove themselves, and so their work ethic over the summer, and then including our drills and so far and team and stuff, uh, they're hungry. I guess what what role maybe do you have in these guys who are looking to take the next step? How do you kind of help them along that path? Yeah, uh, just give them the tools to get the job done. You know, it's there's a lot of different ways to hammer in a nail. Um, and so trying to give them different tools to, hey, this is how we can get here to this spot. Um, and then also uh, doing everything in my power to keep, uh, you know, Braden Gleason healthy. That yeah. helps us too. And having him back, how important is that? It's so important. Uh, also, that kind of goes back to that sense of calmness and normal. It helps. Yeah. One more for me, I guess. You know, you, yourself, you played here. Coach Higgins played here. Just kind of how cool is it for these guys to be coached by guys who were also in their shoes at one time? Yeah. I don't know how cool it is for them, but it's really cool for us. Uh, they probably like, man, I'm so tired of hearing this, but we love it. You know, it's, this is home. There's more of a sense of pride than just if you had a job here. Um, you know, the power you really means something to a lot, especially. Well, you, you meant uh, some of the guys had mentioned that they felt like they had been mentored by guys who weren't here. And Coach Higgins has talked several times about the Hornet way. You guys have a lot of different sayings. Family over everything is one of them. And he had mentioned at MIAA Media Days that you guys in this era where everybody is transferring, you guys don't really have a lot of turnover in the transfer portal. How does that help you guys in terms of having those player-led discussions in terms of previous wide receivers in to on top of the instruction that Coach Higgins has given them, that you're giving them, but getting that instruction from players and those players pass it along and then, you know, you've passed it on to players who are passing it on to Zion and hopefully he's going to pass it on to the next guy. How important is that in terms of culture building and program building? Absolutely. Um, yeah, there were guys here long before me that really built the culture. Um, and so, you know, when Coach Higgins got here and changed the culture, there was a lot of change. There was a lot of, you know, little details that he had to continuously just dig into and dig into and dig into to completely change it. And now, you know, through the recruiting process and guys are here for five and six years sometimes, um, you know, that really changes to where they handle it themselves almost. We don't have to really, you know, hammer it into them as much as you might actually think because the culture's been set. You know, brick by brick, family over everything you mentioned. Zion Jones is a guy that's going to be stepping into a little bit of a different role this year, maybe a little bit more expected of him. What's the biggest adjustment, if any? What are the things that you guys have been talking to him about? You know, because obviously you don't want him to change that much because you wouldn't be giving him the opportunity if he hadn't earned it last year and been earning it in the offseason. But what does the mindset have to change when you are a number one and are going to be getting more first team and first snap reps? Yeah, for him it was consistency. You know, he'd be, you know, first team all MIAA for a rep and then the second rep you pull your hair out because he didn't know what he was doing. So um, for him it's been consistency and he's taken on that role fantastic. Um, and then at the same time, you know, he's thrusted into a leadership role and he doesn't even maybe know it all the time. Um, because he's in, w repping with the wands and stuff, all eyes are on him. So, um, and he's handled it awesome. I noticed at the end of practice, you guys were doing some, some running and there was one of the defensive guys down there. And well, about the first half, it looked like you may, you may get him. Uh, yeah. how, how, much, how often do you get out there and, and, and do those runs with the guys? Not often, not very often. We, uh, we had a couple of receivers that needed some extra conditioning, and if I can do it, they can do it. So. Well, and I mean, I think that Jalen said that I had to ask and, or tell you that you can't run with him, but I don't Who know. said that? Uh, that, that? I think that was Varner, I believe. It's crazy. Crazy. <laughs> you still get out there? No, no, he's, yeah, he's on a different level. <laughs> That's all I got.
All right, Coach. How you doing, buddy? All right, how are you? Good. Um, back at practice, a couple of days under your belt. Just kind of how exciting to be back out here. Yeah, I'm real excited to get going, you know. Uh, but uh, it, this summer goes by really fast. Uh, it feels like we're on our fifth day, to be quite honest with you, but we're only on our second. And I think part of that is just to get our, our players to the field. There's just so many different things. You know, you have move-in day at the dorms. You have compliance meeting. You have a team meeting. You have physicals, all those different things. So, um, but, um, but yeah, we're excited about, you know, we've got a good group. So, yeah, we're definitely excited about getting out here and getting going. Big part of this team is offense, wide receivers, quarterback, you know, the air attack. Um, a lot of guys left from last year. Got Jalen and um, Tyler coming back, but a guy like Zion stepping up to the next role. How do you how important do you think you know the next minute up's going to be for this offense? Well, it's going to be very important because uh, and Zion knows it. He knows that the shoes that he has to fill. Uh, you know, we lost Corey Thomas, all conference wide receiver. Uh, then you had veteran guys like Will Will Amos and Dex Swinehart. So not only Zion needs to step up, but there's got to be some other guys step up too. And I think Zion <clears throat> had a good spring, uh, especially early on. Uh, and I think for two, he had a great summer. He had a great summer. Uh, and then the, the first two days of practice, he's, he's looking like he should. Uh, he's got great speed and great athletic ability. Um, so he, he definitely understands how important it is. And, and the thing about it is that we've had a lot of great receivers here uh, probably in the past 10 years. And I said this yesterday, the most important thing is all those older receivers teaching those younger guys. So when those younger guys get older, they know what how to teach <laughs> the younger guys we got now. So I look at it like Zion had some really good leadership ahead of him. And he should know and understand the importance of what his role needs to be this year for us to be successful. How important is that culture, I guess, going back to when maybe when you were playing yourself here to have yourself a long still time around, ago, right but, now, but still <laughs> just the continuity of yourself here. Tyler was a player here. He's now a coach, just kind of building the, you know, the foundation. Yeah, the I think it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, I think that word gets overused a lot, honestly, but I really believe in what we have here. I believe in the things that we do. Uh, I believe we try to do the right thing always, and we try to make sure that we have a relationship with our players, not only just what they're doing athletically, but just off the field too as well. As I think I've said this before, I grew up with Coach's son. So the, the player-coach relationship to me is vitally important. And uh, I think players, they're going to respond uh, to you better if they they don't care how much you know till they know how much you care. That's an old Lou Holtz. I read that in a book one time, and I, I, I believe that. So, uh, and then you look at the guys we got coaching for us. They're, the majority of them are former players. And some people may look at that as a negative, but I look at it as a positive. Number one is they know what our culture is about. They lived it. They were a part of it. And the thing about it, it's always changing because you always want to continue to make it better. You can't be, ever be satisfied. And then just obviously Braden coming back, you know, quarterback's a big part of the offense. How has he maybe kind of worked with Zion and some of the newer guys are going to be more involved with the offense this year? I think just leadership and the fact that he, he, he coaches them. You know, in the summertime, we're not able to be out here with him. And so we got to rely on Braden. We got we to gotta rely on Tyler Common. We got to rely on Tommy Zimmerman. And for those guys to help those younger guys and to, you know, to to be uh, uh, Coach Higgins, I guess. Braden's got to be me, you know. Uh, and I'm sure those guys don't really like that, but uh, <laughs> he has his own way of doing it. But that's that, to me, is uh, what he knows that he needs to bring to the table is be a better leader than he was last year. And I think he did a great job last year, you know. But every year's a process and, and uh, he knows he has to be better with it and, and I think he's done that. He's really stepped up and he's you always know your quarterback's going to be vocal but I think he's taking it to another level. How do you set the foundation and give those guys the leadership tools that they need to be those leaders in the offseason? That's a good question. I think for us it's always trying to put those guys in situations where they have to lead. Uh, we, we do some things in the spring where they're in charge of a group of 10 players and they have to decide who's going to take part in a competition. They have to do community service and uh, they got to basically lead that unit. 
Uh, and then we also have, I don't want to say like it's a leadership class, and, but we, we, we give our, our leadership counsel, they, they have books they read, and you know, again, just trying to give them knowledge. And I think even myself being a head coach, um, I have to always be a lifelong learner and trying to be better uh, at leadership because it isn't perfect. And there are days that you go home and you tell yourself, I wish I'd have done better today. And I think that's the message you try to get them, try to get across to them is just trying to get better each and every day and trying to put them in situations where they have to be vocal and they have to lead. Well, one thing that you were vocal about today and something that I've heard several times is, hey, you know, Don said, we play fast in Emporia State, fast Friday, <laughs> speed. And I think maybe there was, I don't think it was the first stringers, but there was maybe one play today that I saw, maybe more, where I don't think they were quite lined up as quickly as you would have liked. Day two of practice, obviously, so there's a long way before the game, but how important is that message of speed, speed, speed to be able to run the kind of offense that you want to run? Well, uh, as you said, you probably heard me, uh, I think, that message, the reason it's important is because the coaches need to be saying it all the time. If you want something to be important, right, you're going to hear it a lot and it's going to drive you nuts and it's going to be get embedded, uh, you know, into your head. And that's what I look at our leaders. It's been embedded in their head. They know. They've heard it. You know, we're not playing fast enough. You know, get lined up. There's mechanics to everything we're doing and there's attention to detail with no huddle. It's not just play fast. All right, and I know that's what you heard me say out there, but there is coaching involved with it. You know, where everybody needs to be. If you paid a little bit more attention, I was telling him to look at this ball spotter and, and the quarterback's getting down a hash and all kinds of little different mechanics that, that the guys have to do to give us an opportunity to play as fast as we possibly can. One thing that I noticed yesterday from Coach Laporto is he was a bit exasperated because they just couldn't get any turnovers. Today they did get some turnovers, and the guys in black over here were really excited. How excited does that make you to have a defense that's going to force some turnovers? Obviously you wish the offense is not going to get many right. turnovers, but you'd love to have extra possessions for your offense too. No, it's, uh, I think it's, uh, it goes hand in hand. Of course, yeah, I, I don't want to see turnovers, and we threw uh, two interceptions down there, three interceptions down there, and seven on, one with our young freshman kid. And, and Braden didn't get the ball off quick enough one time in seven on seven. Uh, but uh, that's that's important. That's why we were successful last year. If you look at where we were at uh, in the nation, and I'm not really for sure, Don would probably know, but I, I guarantee you we had to be in the top 10 in turnover margin. And uh, that, that gave us that opportunity to win nine games. So we want those guys to, to get turnovers. What I haven't seen yet, which is good, is the ball on the ground, you know, and uh, Turnovers are going to happen. Uh, you don't want them to. The biggest thing is is trying to coach a, a quarterback through why he made that turnover. You know, so my first initial thought is to get upset with them. But at the end of the day, I got to watch film with them and and coach them and teach them. My last thing for you is today, last day in helmets only for a while. Tomorrow, put the shoulder pads on. How do you need to see the intensity pick up? What do you expect to see tomorrow when the guys got the extra equipment on? Well, to be honest with you. Uh, I hope our, yeah, I want our intensity to be better, but that's the one thing. We want our guys to practice with high intensity at all times. Of course. Whether we're out in, in our, our helmets, uh, but tomorrow we'll be in shoulder pads. What I want to make sure is that everything we do here with our younger guys is just teaching them how to practice. All right? I mean, football, again, now when I played, you know, we lined up and we did inside drill. We would do it for 25, 30 minutes, okay? And we weren't worried about guys being on the ground. Well, nowadays, you want to be physical and you want to be competitive, but you don't want to be combative. I use that term a lot out here. We're trying to protect our players, but at the same time, trying to be, be physical. And sometimes that can be difficult, but we have to teach our guys how to practice. So tomorrow, I'm looking for the high intensity, guys moving around fast, but also being smart. Just because you put shoulder pads on doesn't mean you take an extra shot on one of your teammates. And, just, just understanding, again, how to play fast and through the whistle, but also protect our teammates and still be competitive. And then you talk about um, being able to teach those kids. How good is it to have the veterans that you have to let you get looks at guys that are newcomers? Yeah, it's, uh, it's huge. And uh, I've said this, uh, it's even good. Like, I can go watch special teams drills at the beginning of practice, and I can tell Braden two or three things that the quarterbacks need to be doing. 
and he can take those guys down there and take them through it. That's huge for me, you know, and I trust him. And we got other players on the team just like that, that we can say, hey, you know, can you, you know, for, if we got a coach coaching special teams and say the, the D lineman, if Coach Supporto was on a special team and I know he has trust in, in Coach Eddie Vinson to go down there and work with those guys or Jordan Williams, you know, that sort of thing. That's, that's it plus by having veterans and having veterans that have been here. Not, not being a veteran that's a two-year transfer guy. And we have those guys, but I'm talking about guys that have been with us five, six years. They could probably go out there and run the practice, okay? They could all imitate me how I am at practice. But again, you want to talk about culture and foundation, that's what it's about right there.